I'm George Alfredis. And I'm Dave Matthews. And this is What's Next Wall Street. Yes, this is a show about winning trades. You see, I still got my hair and I can't help it. <laughs> yeah, we want to help you learn about George's hair and trading <laughs> in a fun, entertaining, and most importantly, a useful way. Yes, so we're going to talk about all the hot new trending products and services that we think you will not only want to use, but also possibly invest in. We'll also cover the fundamentals of those companies to make you an informed trader and make it easier to target investment potential. Plus, we'll share our thoughts on where the charts and indicators say a particular stock is going. All this is so that you can create a tailored trade plan and stay up to speed on what's next on Wall Street so that all you got to do is stack your, you're supposed to do stack, you're supposed to do stack your game. No, we're going to do it slow and be like, <laughs> stack your, you know, next time. You can email us at WNW at optionsplayers.com or hit us up on the social medias at <laughs> What's Next Wall Street with your questions. We can also direct you to instructors and experts over at Options Players who dig into those trading fundamentals. Hit us up, WNW at optionsplayers.com. It's time for the Stock Minute. Boom. Okay, so I told y'all, I'm gonna just gonna keep talking about traveling until I actually get to go somewhere. Lucky for you, I'm headed to the beach, hence the braids. Uh, so, but since my kids order room and pool service 24 seven, we are doing a house rental. The only way they're getting snacks at the pool is if they go into the house and get them and bring them out to the pool themselves. Now, obviously Dave, Airbnb has gone through a tough year thanks to the pandemic, but now the stock is rebounding and worth taking a look at. CEO Brian Chesky is excitedly optimistic, saying he thinks there's gonna be a travel rebound coming that's unlike anything we've ever seen. Our boots were on the ground, meaning me, I'm the one wearing the boots. Anyway. We've confirmed this sentiment. Right, and just last week, flights and hotels were sold out in some hot travel destinations. And now Chesky says his company will need millions of more hosts to meet this resurging demand. Mm. Now, the interesting part about Airbnb stock, it's yet to react to this news. Last quarter's retreat from technology stocks has, in our opinion, created an opportunity that needs to be looked at. Yeah. And the clues provided by Brian make this one ripe for the taking. As long as the market as a whole stays healthy, we may see a rush to ticketers like Airbnb as the summer travel bug flies and people feel more confident in being around other humans. Yeah, that's it, <laughs> humans. <laughs> All right. Today's Wall Street Pro Tip is brought to you by optionsplayers.com. We're gonna cover five general rules necessary for becoming a consistently successful trader. While there are many attributes great traders exhibit, these are the easiest ones to highlight and implement for vast financial improvements. Okay, number one, kiss. No, no, oh. keep it simple, sunshine. Simplify most unsimplify is what you need to do. Most unsuccessful traders target way too many plays at any given time. Choose a small few and manage those well. Number two, trade to your plan. Mm -hmm. The best way to learn and grow is to adjust to your mistakes. If you trade your plan and the plan doesn't work, then it's easy to figure out where you went wrong. If you have no plan, then you can't determine what part of the plan was executed incorrectly for the next potential of opportunity. Right, so number three, don't fall in love, okay? You know this is my problem. I get emotionally attached to a company or a company story, but as we've covered on previous episodes, emotions kill accounts. So don't fall in love with a ticker because the market doesn't care about your interest. We don't love them IPOs. <laughs> Ah, that was great. <laughs> That's funny. And to piggyback off all that, don't revenge trade. Everyone's done this and it rarely goes well. Don't take a new position to recoup a previous mistake. Each position should be targeted with reasoning and not with emotion. Last but certainly not least, expect losses. Now there isn't a trader out there who's perfect, so don't you expect to be. Losses are gonna come and your success is gonna follow by managing those losses and learning from your mistakes. Just like in life, if you follow your rules and expect to lose 50% of your trades, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised at your performance. Yes, that's right. Being right only half the time while managing those losses is gonna result in huge gains over time and you're gonna enjoy trading more. And I'm gonna use those for dating tips too. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> okay, this is the part of the show where we get to hear from you. You can always hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street or email us at WNW at, op WNW at optionsplayers.com. I only say it like 15 times a day. That tongue twister <laughs> is surprising that our first email is even here and it comes from George in Hotlanta. George asks us, what is an iron condor and when is it applied? 
What? What is an iron? Well, this condor? is a great question, George. An iron condor is a strategy where two vertical spreads, a put spread and a call spread, with the same expiration date yet different strikes, is purchased. This is essentially selling both sides of the underlying instrument by simultaneously shorting the same number of calls and puts, then covering each position with the purchase of further out of the money calls and puts, respectively. Okay. It got its name from the shape of the profit and loss graph, which loosely resembles a condor, a large bird. Actually, the California condor is the largest flying bird in North America. Its wings can nearly stretch 10 feet from tip to tip. Some of these are considered eagles, while some are considered vultures. What is this, National Geographic? <laughs> oh, sorry, okay. The iron part of the name comes from taking positions in both calls and puts. And there you have it, soaring with eagles on what's next Wall Street. Okay, Birdman. Our next email <laughs> is from Eric C, who's an optionsplayers.com member. Eric writes, how do you know when you're ready to be a full-time trader and switch from your day job? Well, that's a money question, literally. But as a general rule of thumb, you should experience consistent success throughout all types of market conditions before even considering that. Typically, two years is the number tossed around. However, this recent bull market run has been much longer than two years. So adversity hasn't reared its ugly head aside from the pandemic drop, okay? So traders are gonna know when it's time, when it's glaringly obvious, because you're gonna be rich. No, seriously though. Uh, when the pressure mounts, that's when you're gonna be tested, so make sure you're both mentally and financially ready. So if you've got questions or comments about the show, we'd love to hear from you, but only if you're nice. Hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street or email us at wnwoptionsplayers.com. What's next with tech? You tell me. So Georgia, have you noticed that used cars are going up in price and new cars are sitting by the thousands on storage lots? Crazy. Well, that's because of the chip shortage that's making these new cars really only half built, hmm. meaning the hardware is there, but the firmware is missing. Now, firmware is the software on chips that runs things like your entertainment system, air conditioning, and oh yeah, it also lets the engine run. <laughs> so some manufacturers are getting clever and their models are only coming with one key. And they're even removing that annoying auto start stop feature of the engine that most of us turn off anyway. Oh my gosh, that's the first thing I turn off right after I adjust the mirror and get my tunes going. <laughs> well, once we go all electric, which is inevitable, we won't have that auto start stop engine problem oh, any longer, but we also won't have the sweet roar of that engine. Mm. So why are there no chips for these cars? Well, there was a fire in a Japanese factory back in March of 2021, and that took out a plant that those countries and Japan relied on for their vehicles. On top of that, because of the COVID pandemic, many of the US automobile manufacturers didn't pre-order surplus or anticipate the demand for new car purchases. In fact, many factories were closed, and this led to a backlog of manufacturing that created a domino effect for all supply chains. So I see that like our car dealers are even reaching out to my family. They've been emailing us and calling us to buy back their cars. But if they saw the suckers stuck to the floor and the ceiling and the Sour Patch Kids melted into the leather seats, I think they changed their minds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's because they're trying to fill up those empty lots. Well, not exactly empty, but they are looking a little bit tattered and tired. Mm. So what can we do about this? Well, some folks are excited to sell those extra cars. Well, I get rid of extra ones in my garage because we could use the space. However, I've got a son who's about to start driving. He might be upset about that. Well, I only have a bunch of old used cars that I like working on, so this doesn't matter to me one iota. But I do have my eye on a new electric F-150 or maybe even the Cybertruck, but I'm pissed at Elon for manipulating Bitcoin prices more often than he changes his underwear. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your point on this? Will Micron and NVIDIA go up because of these boosted orders from the automotive sector? Just leave a note for us down in the comments. We want to hear from you. Okay, Dave, let's talk about Roblox. No, not, no, not the old Soul Train dance, not the robot. Roblox. Now, although that was impressive though, Dave, uh, Roblox is an online game platform and game creation system. Roblox calls itself an imagination platform. So users can program and play their own games, millions of 3D online games. So there are upwards 200 million accounts on the platform with over 60 million players each month. Roblox can be played on a PC, Amazon devices, Xbox One, tablets, uh, apps, etc., etc. So gamers are so serious about their games and what makes this site really cool and unique is that it's pretty much created by gamers 
for gamers. Wait, it's for gamers, by gamers, whatever. Anyway, um, so it's almost like a social media game site, if that makes sense. I say this because you can create a profile. Um, you can post to a feed that shows who you follow and who follows you. You got the badges you've won. For instance, if you get 20 friends, you get a friendship badge, right? Wow. So there's also chat and party with friends you've added from your profile, which could include anonymous friends. So parents might want to check that out, you know, familiarize yourself with the privacy setting. You're supposed to be 18 to play it, but I know for sure that my 15 year old has played and he hasn't needed anything from me to do so. There is, however, a section where kids can block and report abuse, but still monitor young ones if they're using this platform or actually any other platform for that matter. So with all that said, Roblox is a hot IPO. We keep telling you guys, watch Gen Zers. They are giving the suits a run for their money in the stock game. But there are some unique risks with Roblox, like number one, Roblox. Number one, it is a children-centric platform. And you know kids. It's n hot now, but tomorrow, they'll be on to the next one. Okay? Yeah, just, just like GameStop, mm -hmm. still the metaverse platform isn't going away. If anything, it's getting more and more evolved and more and more confusing to people like me. All right. But... Back to Roblox. Is it smart to invest in Roblox or is it overvalued? Let's welcome Options Player's lead instructor, Greg Kraus, to the show to help us sort through the robots. <laughs> so Roblox, my kid plays Roblox. Uh, it is what it is. And the numbers look good, but are, uh, when, they, when you look at subscribers and daily users, they're great. But where does Roblox make their money? They make it off of paid users. Uh, they're not making their money off of, you know, advertisement or selling your data. Uh, so when you look at the fundamentals, it's not a great company. All right. 2020, yes, their daily users went up like 100%. Great. It was during a pandemic. You know what I'm saying? Every, everybody's numbers went kind of up. So you had all these kids that weren't at school. Now they can play roadblocks. All right. Well, when school starts back, probably, you know, that's going to go down. All right. Sorry. It, it just is. But all these great and you hear millions and millions and millions and millions of daily users. Tell me how many of those are actually paid users, because I'll tell you 480,000. Now, if I owned a company, I would love to have 480,000 uh, subscribers that would be that pay me money. That'd be great. But uh, in this case, the company is worth, I don't even know how much money now. It is uh, an incredible amount. I'm not even going to look at it. It was 45, 50 billion. No, <laughs> it's Roblox. Adults aren't using it. Individuals that will purchase through micro aren't using it. We already know that 480,000. So is it worth that amount? Absolutely not. Okay. Just, is it worth half of that? Maybe. How can Roblox adjust to the, the new times? If you ever not played a Roblox game, go play it. It's, it's not the best. So let's compare Roblox with, I wouldn't say it's nearest competitor, but in my house it is. Okay. So if the kid's not playing Roblox, it's probably Minecraft. Okay. Which one of those makes more money? Well, you know, it is back and forth. But when it really comes down to it, Roblox has an evaluation on that portion of Roblox or that portion of Minecraft, which, by the way, is owned by Microsoft. But just that portion, if you were to evaluate both of those companies and the current value that Microsoft puts on that, Roblox is worth like eight times the amount of Minecraft. Nope. Sorry. Um, so I would say Roblox is great. I, I think we should get down a little bit, uh, before you try to get into it long-term, but at that evaluation, everything in the market's kind of evaluated high right now. So I don't want to say that it's not going to beat some other stuff, but find somewhere else for your money, most likely, but go talk to someone, see what they say. That's not. A, you know, that's a financial advisor that can actually look at your stuff and he's absolutely not going to suggest that you invest in Roblox. Simple. I wish y'all would give me a stock that I can say, Hey, this is a good stock because I'm getting a little negative Nancy over here, always being the pessimist. Uh, but this goes with most 
new IPOs anyways, and that's a great thing. Uh, you know, IPOs come out, you expect them to grow, but it's roadblocks. Roadblocks has been around for a while, okay? Now, where roadblocks could go is how do they expand into Asia? Now, if they expand into Asia, that could be a great thing, but it still comes down to their financials are absolutely awful. And for a company that's been in that's been in business for so long to actually be losing money they had to IPO just to stay open is basically what it is when I looked at the financials and and you know their financials really we'll find out more now that they're required by the SEC to report better right uh, to report to report more information uh, so we'll see but from my view I think they lost like 200 million last year lost money the year prior to that and year prior to that. And that's just how much money they lost after getting, you know, with tax deductions and everything else. So, you know, tax rebate. So, I mean, it's, it's Roblox. Dunsky, no. Possible future, absolutely. Buy at $60, hails to the no, all right? <laughs> all right. Hails to the no. <laughs> And this is why we say watch an IPO for a while yes. and see what happens. Absolutely. And um, we like to thank Greg, <laughs> lead instructor at Options Players, Mr. Kraus, your honesty uh, cracks us up. We unmatched. love it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Remember, if you've got questions, we can try and help you answer them. Greg will answer them very honestly. Yes. And we'd love to hear from you. Yes. Email us at WNW at optionsplayers.com. Or, of course, you can hit us up on social media at What's Next Wall Street. I'm George Alfredis. And I'm Dave Matthews. We'll see you next time on What's Next Wall Street. Let's talk about kids. No. What? Why are you in the mood? Keep it simple. No. Stupid. Uh -uh.